Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about halogenation reactions and halohydrin formation. Similar in some ways, um, they're addition reactions to pi bonds. All right, so we'll start. Just like the name implies, halogenations, we're adding two halogens across a carbon carbon double bond, whereas or a triple bond, whereas in the case of a halohydrin, we're adding a halogen, and a hydrogen is really the alcohol group from a water molecule. All right. So we will start with a methyl cyclohexene. All right, so suppose we have a methyl cyclohexene, and we react that with bromine or chlorine. What we get is two halogens across that carbon-carbon double bond. Um, but if you notice, one bromine is on a wedge and one bromine is on a dash. It's what we call an anti-addition. Right? The two groups that were added across the carbon-carbon double bond, one is a dash and one is a wedge. It's an anti-addition. If they were both dashes or both wedges, that would be what we call a syn addition. The case of a halohydrin formation, again, we have a methyl cyclohexene. It's halohydrin, so we could use bromine or chlorine. But in the second step, what we use is water, right? So water is our second reagent that we will use, right? And our final product um, notice we get this plus it's an antimer, right? Kind of. Okay. So what we end up getting in this case is water. Its alcohol group will add to the more substituted position, whereas bromine will add to the less substituted position. If you make a note of it, it is an anti-addition. Right? But the alcohol group added to the more substituted position. It's an anti-addition, but it's also a Markovnikov addition of the alcohol group, all right? Where the alcohol group is being added to the more substituted position of that carbon-carbon double bond. All right, so those are some things to keep in mind. So now let's draw the mechanism. So if our reagent is bromine and our nucleophile is the pi bond where our lone, you know, our two electrons are, what happens is it will attack one of the two bromines. Okay. And those two electrons will go to this bromine. But if you think about it, bromine has a high electron density around it. And instead of forming a carbyl cation, what happens is that this bromine will actually form a bond to the molecule. Right? In lieu of forming a carbyl cation. So what we end up getting is really. which now carries the charge. And we call that a bromidium ion bridged intermediate. We call it a bromidium ion bridged intermediate. Right? End up having a bromidium ion bridged intermediate. Right? Well then, We have this bromine, which is negatively charged, 
right? Um, remember, this fermenium ion bridge to intermediate, both those arrow added to the same phase. So you could think about those two as being both dashes or both wedges, right? And then we have bromine. So if you think about it, um, if you cleave this bond, you either form a tertiary carbocation or a secondary carbocation, right? The bromine will attack the carbon, and then this carbon bromine bond will be cleaved. Those two electrons will go to bromine, and then we get our final product, right? But we could get both enantiomers, right? Both enantiomers are possible. In other words, you could have it where this bromine instead is in a wedge. This bromine is on a dash, and we have the methyl on a wedge, right? Okay, well, how about halal hydrogen formation? Okay. How about in the case of a halo hydrogen formation? So the very first step is the formation of a bromidium ion bridged intermediate, where you have the bromine, the pi bond is attacking the bromine, but the bromine goes and forms another bond instead of forming a carbocation. You still have the methyl that we end up forming this bromidium, oops, it's, actually, it's an actual positive charge, you end up forming a bromidium ion bridged intermediate. And then now water is actually our nucleophile instead of the bromine ion, right? And water adds to the more substituted position, it's a Markovnikov addition. So water adds to the more substituted position. This carbon-bromine bond is cleaved, and those two electrons go to bromine. So now we have this bond to bromine, right? If we draw it on a wedge, we're gonna draw Methyl on a wedge, and then water is right here. It's positively charged, right? Because we added the entire water molecule, so water is positively charged. So now what we could use is another water molecule to basically deprotonate it. And then we end up getting our final product, which is an anti-Markovnikov addition. I mean, it's an anti-addition, meaning that the two groups that were added are opposite. One is a dash and one is a wedge. They added to the opposite phase of that carbon-carbon double bond. Right? If you think about it, this is much like an SN2, what's happening right here. right? And if both those bonds are dashes or wedges, when one attacks and one breaks, it'll swap. right? So you end up having opposite configurations, and we call that an anti-addition. It's a Markovnikov addition of the alcohol group. All right, so halogenation and halohydrin formation are very similar, right? So if it's just the halogen, we're adding two halogens across a carbon-carbon double bond, and it's an anti-addition. If it's a halohydrin, you'll notice you're using water as well. And in the second step, the nucleophilic attack happens using water. It's still an anti-addition but the alcohol group adds to the more substituted position of that carbon-carbon double bond. I hope this was helpful.